Welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey here at the helm as we show you another project to work on. And this is just quite simply a tunic. Now I'll admit to you, I'm not that great at making clothes. And because of that, I always get my shapes wrong. And I'm telling you, this one was a snap. I'm actually really proud of it. It's one of my very first clothing pieces ever done. And the pattern was so easy to follow. The girls, the double stitch twins, created this pattern. And you know what? They always have such amazing, vibrant ideas. Now in this particular pattern that we have here, it is a two piece. So we're making two panels, we're putting them together. But this is the thing, it says that one size fits all. We know that not to be true. So this is one of those ideas that if it's not big enough for you, you can decide that when you're making the first one whether to continue or not by laying it down onto the table with maybe a shirt that you already own that you know that fits you and lay it over the top to see if it's gonna stretch perfectly to the distance that it needs to go. Maybe you want this to be more of a dress. You can make it even longer. It's one of those items that you can customize to suit your needs very, very simply without a lot of math. Now, one thing I did notice is that you'll see that I have measured everything and put everything together at the end of this tutorial. This has actually been altered since I have done that video. The reason for it is that I thought it looked sloppy on the mannequin. And this is the reason for telling you this is that I thought her neckline was a little bit too sloppy because she is a, probably a size zero it wasn't working for her. So what I decided to do is that I actually went another uh, three inches on the shoulder on both sides in order to really make it wrap around the mannequin. And so that's something that you can decide for yourself when you put it on. Is it looking a little bit too sloppy? Maybe do up a few more seams on the top and really bring it together. And of course the outside, the holes just like so again are very easy. So while I was doing this project I got thinking to myself, you know the beach. This is a great cover-up idea. What if you change the yarn to something else? Like this is more of a fashion yarn. You could do fashion yarn on the beach if you wished. But what if you changed it to like a cotton or something even tie-dye looking, something really fun? You could put this over top of your bathing suit so not all your junk is hanging out. I know, that's five stars. <laughs> <laughs> two thumbs up right there. You know it just does a great job. You still get the sunlight going through the panel area and it goes long enough so that all the vital areas that you may be self-conscious about is actually being covered up but you're not completely covered which is actually a really perfect idea. So here's a close-up of the drop stitch tunic and you can see that the chains are going down and this is the way that you would wear it when you're walking around and strutting your stuff. But in actual fact when we go to work on this we're working on it in a horizontal just like this and all it is is essentially just chains that we're attaching at the same spot. Now this particular uh, model goes all the way down below your buttocks but if you wanted to make it shorter you just don't have to do as many chains and if you wanted something longer you can just simply just make it even longer so that it can turn itself into a dress. Either way it's a great accessory so let's get started on showing you how to make the drop stitch tunic and this is a free pattern available by redheart.com. In today's tutorial I'm going to be using Red Heart with Love and it's a premium acrylic yarn. I'm going to be using a Susan Bates 6.5 millimeter crochet hook or a size K. And this is really quite a fabulous idea. In the pattern it's calling for Red Heart Boutique Midnight but I think this pattern is very versatile. You can probably use any yarn that you wish as long as your hook complements your yarn. So let's get started on starting our very first chain. So to get started let's do a slip knot and we are fabulous and remember there are slower tutorials available if you're new to crochet to get started. You just have to visit redheart.com as well as thecrochetcrowd.com. We're starting off with chaining of 105 and remember for chaining we just simply row boat back. So we just go one, two, three, four, and five. I'm not going to make you sit here for 105 chains. So just do 105 and when we come back we're going to start on our very first row and this is a very very simple idea. To keep this tutorial real I'm just doing a swatch just like so but everything that you're going to see is matching exactly what you need to do. So the first row is so simple. We go second chain from the hook. So one and two and we just wrap the yarn going in. Wrap it and pulling it through. You end up with three on your hook and then you pull through all three half double crochet. We are going to do that in every chain going all the way across. So we just want a nice edge 
and this is acting as the edge that will be sewn together either through whip stitching or through single crochet joining if, we, if you want when it comes to this. So this is the edges that will be joining each other when you're doing both panels. Remember that in this project you're going to need two panels, one for the front and one for the back and exactly what I'm showing you right now is can be done for either or. So when you do one panel you can come back to this video and then follow the video again to start off your second panel. So again half double crochet all the way across. We're going to meet back up where we're going to turn and begin the rest of this fun project together. So I just finished going all the way across and yours will obviously be a lot longer because you're going to be doing the whole thing and essentially this is how we do it for the rest of the project. This is so hard, <laughs> really not, it's actually very simple. So here we go, we're going to chain two. So we just turned our project and simply just chain two and we are going to HDC half double crochet into the very next stitch just like this. Just like that very quick and simple. So now this is the really fun part. We're going to start creating the chains that go across and we're just going to simply chain 15. So I'm going to count that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And you will be an expert in counting to 15 by the time you're done this project. So now that you did your chaining of 15, we're simply just going to skip over 15 of these stitches on top. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we go to the 16th one. So we're just going to half double crochet. Do you see how I'm pinching down here? If I don't, it's going to make it just all spin out of control. So just pinch going into the 16th one and we're going to half double crochet like that and then we go into the very next one for half double crochet and so that's all you have to do. So we're going to simply just chain 15 again and then you come down here and come to the 16th one and put two half double crochets and by the time you get to the end of your line you will be left with two stitches at the very end. You just have to simply just keep going back and forth to creating this. So when you hold it up just like this you see how these distances equal each other? That's exactly what you're looking for when you're doing all these projects. So what I want to do now is that I want to show you just one more turn because I want to show you how it joins together when you're working with going across for the second time. Due to this being a swatch, this distance, the larger one, is the correct thing to match the pattern. This small one here is just because it's a swatch and I've just kind of ad-libbed. But exactly what you need to do here. So if you didn't want so many chains, you could actually make it smaller and go halfway and that's something that your creativity can decide for yourself what you like. So every time you start a row, you're simply just going to chain two and we are just going to half double crochet into the very first one only. So in my case because I ad-libbed you would normally just chain 15 and then come down here but in this case it's 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Just remember that this is my ad-libbing. So when we come across because it, if it would have been 15 it would be matching this and we simply come into the very first one. So I'm pinching down again and coming into the, fir the first one. So it's the same one underneath and half double crochet and we simply half double crochet the second one. So we just keep matching that and that's how they keep looking like they're the same uh, lines as each other and so essentially again 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And we simply just come all the way across and if this was a normal in the middle of it you would simply just come in here but because this is the end it's the same thing. You still come into that one at the end. So I'm just kind of pinching it. I find with this that the more material that's completed in your hands is easier to hold um, but don't let my struggling uh, confuse you for this being complicated at any point. And then we come into the very edge chain like so. So there's always going to be two half double crochets. So remember always in the middle there will be two half double crochets. In the end there will be two half double crochets and on the other side there will also be two half double crochets. So let's just simply turn it now and say we want to finish it. So you're going to follow the pattern. It says go to um, all the way to chain or row 45 and this is for a one size fits all kind of idea. So if you are not sure this is going to work for you simply you can grab a shirt 
and then just lay this over top and remember th that we're working it like this. So you would have the sleeve on one side, sleeve on the other and you can just, just lie it down on top of your shirt to see if it's gonna be wide enough in order to fit your body. So you can make it much bigger or much uh, less. So finally on row number 45 it says chain two and it says to half double crochet into each one of the stitches. So essentially instead of doing the chaining all the way across we're just creating a border just like we started because that's going to be sewn together when you go to put this together and then each one of the chains is going to be a half double crochet going all the way across and essentially what you're going to do what you're ending up with is that you'll have a nice blocked uh, panel and it's simply you just have to finish this panel and then just do the second one and you'll find that this project actually goes a lot faster than you realize and can make a great accessory. So so simply I just got to finish this border here on this one and put two panels together and then sew them together or I can just do a slip stitch join or I can do a single crochet join. Really you are the artist you can decide what is going to work for you in order to make it more simpler. So this is a great idea very simple quick and easy. So join me in the next part of this video where we start putting things together and I show you some tips on how to keep it so that it's going to fit your body just perfectly. So join me with that next. And welcome back to the second half of this tutorial. Very easy. Let's put our tunic together. Have our two panels just like so. Very no brainer. Really quite simple. And so when we've been working on it, we've been working on it like this. But what I need you to do is that I need you to turn it up and go on this like this. So the two edges that we've had for the half double crochet is that actual fact the side edges where we're attaching everything together. So the neckline is right on top. It doesn't matter which side is facing up. It doesn't matter if I've used this side or that side. Uh, on this when it comes to using this part of the edge they're both identical so it's fairly easy. We have to start marking where the edges are for this and so what I decided to do is that according to the directions you have to just take a tape measure and just measure in six inches from the very edge over and I just used another piece of spare string just to kind of go over and I counted out how many chains are falling in the down direction one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten and I put in a place marker. The reason for I did that is that I measured over six inches over here but what if it was stretched a little bit too much or then therefore you'd actually not have it equal. So I made sure that when I put the stitch mark over here I still have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And so basically I just don't want it to come together all wrong because it's something that you're going to realize afterward. So you want to do the same to this side. I just throw in a stitch marker just so you know. And so now let's measure down the edge. So this is where sleeve is going to uh, attach at the bottom. So all of this in the top is open. This is where your sleeve is going through. Nice and relaxed and according to the directions that we have 16 inches of space from the top of the neckline all the way to the bottom. So I'm just going to go like this. 16 inches and I'm going to place in another stitch marker. So from this stitch marker all the way to the bottom which is um, going all the way down that way, um, that is where it's going to be attached. So I'm kind of looking over here so I can see that if I follow this whole railway road area going across I went one, two, three, it's the fourth stitch down so I'm going to do the same for the other side. So I'm just following it across and then go one, two, three, and four very no-brainer, really quite easy. So that's just temporary and I want to do the same to the other side here. So again going 16 down or you know these are both identical. So I can just look, go to the fourth one down, one, two, three, four and then count the four stitch, one, two, three, and four. So you can see putting this together is really no big deal. And then do the same for the other side. So just follow it across one, two, three, and four. So measuring it out and putting it all together like this uh, beforehand is just going to save you a lot of time and aggravation afterward. So now that's what we're going to do is that you can either sew it together. So what we're going to just do is put one on top of each other and remember because they are both identical on either side it doesn't matter which side that you're going to sew with. So I have my hook 
all ready to go. I have the slip stitched in and seriously I just want to put these two pieces together and just slip stitch it all the way across until I get to the stitch markers. So I'm just going to put it in and in and I'm going to grab the yarn. Now I have the straggler left over in this piece as well but I just want to grab the yarn from the ball and I just want to pull through everything including the starting knot. And what I want to do is that I want to just kind of work it in. You will see that there's really no stitches in order for you to um, put it in. So you're going to have to just eye it up and make it look good. And if you were sewing it would be the same thing. So um, basically I can see that it's almost the same principle just to do it back and forth like this with the slip stitch. It saves you running around trying to find a darning needle at the same time as well. So I'm just carefully putting everything together. And you can see that the two slip markers are there and they're about even. So what if they're not even? You can tr really kind of force it together. Just you know make one side like jump a little further on the one side versus the other. But if you measured it out and you counted and you did them the same then it should equal up anyway. But I always like to give tips just in case that you do I have gone astray and it's not working for you. And finally I'm on the very last stitch where the stitch markers are and I'm just going to pull through and through. And what I want to just do is I want to cut it at that point. Pull the yarn through like this because that tightens on to itself and then just weave it through back through some of the stitches that you just did in order to really secure it into position. Uh, nothing worse than having uh, straggler stuff hanging out of your work afterward. Like so. This yarn is actually really kind of amazing to work with. Very easy. And so at, at this point we can take out, safely take out the stitch markers. And you are essentially going to do the same for all of the areas that you just did. Now let's uh, just cover the bottom area first. I'm going to, so you just have to do the same for the other top of the, of the thing. If you want to, for example, make this thicker so it is more narrow and just keep going. But if you want to follow the directions it was only six inches. So let's uh, turn this material. So this is the top of the shoulder up here. So this here down here is the area for where it's going to come around the waist. We just want to match everything together. Take our yarn and just do a slip stitch all the way up to the marker again. Do the same for the other side and voila you're good to go. So that's how you do this tunic. Really nice and simple.